it seems like everything in my life over the past couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, has pointed to this idea of friendship. The books I'm reading, shows I've watched, things that have happened in my life, all point to this theme of friendship. And so this is sort of the lens through which I'm viewing the world these days, and it's affected, it's come into play with uh, this homily, right? thinking about Christmas and what that means for us. And so in one way, I think that we can say that Christmas is uh, the coming of, of the Word of God among us, is the celebration of God's friendship with man, God becoming our friends. And so I want to discuss three qualities of friendship that we need to focus on that deal with our friendship with God. The first one, which is the quality of any good friendship, is that there has to be a level of being open and honest with one another. That if I hold back something from a person who I call a friend, it's not a very good friendship. A friend is someone we can confide in. A friend is someone that we can bring our troubles to. A friend is someone who would receive what we give, right? Keep it to themselves, not go blab it to everyone. And to try to help us in that situation that we bring to them. But there are several reasons why we could be afraid to be open with someone, right? Maybe we don't trust them. If I just met you, I'm not going to tell you all that stuff, right? It has to be a level of trust before we can share what we, uh, the deep things in our lives. Maybe we're embarrassed about what we've done, right? We don't want to tell anyone, even our closest friends. And so we hold on to it. Uh, maybe we don't know what that person will think of us, right? Well, maybe they'll have a less, um, they'll view me as something less if I tell them these things that I am struggling with or the things I've done. Right? This is true in human friendships. It's also true in our friendship with God, right? That at times we want to hold these things back, right? We don't know if we can trust. Maybe we don't know God well enough to share those things with him. And we need to build that level of trust by spending time with him, right? And God takes the initiative in this, right? God shows us what it means to be open with someone. Right? God has opened himself to us in the act of creation. Right? God, we say, is being itself. And so we didn't exist at one time. Right? We didn't have to exist. But God opened himself up to us and gave us that gift of life. Gave us that gift of being. And so he opened himself up to us in that way. God opened himself up to us by revealing himself to us. Right In the Old Testament, through the prophets, slowly he revealed who he was. And in this day that we celebrate today, we say that God has revealed himself fully to us. Right? By sending his son, by showing us his face. Right? God has been open to us. He holds nothing back from us. He shows us everything. Right? St. John says that Jesus uh, told his followers that I call you friends... Because I have shown you, I've told you everything that I've received from the Father. And so in this openness, my God shows us to be his friends, and he invites us to be his friends in return by being open with him. The second quality of a good friendship is that friends have a common interest. I don't remember a whole lot of what I read, so when I do remember something, I feel like it's pretty important. And as I was thinking about this, I was reminded of something that C.S. Lewis writes in his book called The Four Loves. He distinguishes the love between lovers and the love between friends, and he does it by saying that lovers stand facing each other. They stand facing each other looking at the other person. Whereas friends stand side by side looking at some common thing. Like friends go together towards some common purpose or goal or interest. And the deeper the meaning of that common interest, the deeper the friendship can be. 
right? In high school, I played baseball, at least I was on the team, and I had friends because we had that common interest of baseball. And they were true friends, right? They were good friends, but those friendships could only stay at a certain level if they stayed based off of that simple uh, common thing of baseball. I also have friends, right, that are based on other things. And just a few days ago, I had the great joy of witnessing the marriage of two of my best friends. Best friends in the whole world got to be up there and witness their marriage. And at one point, I was just overwhelmed with the love that I had for these two people and the love they have for me. And so over these last couple of days, I've been sort of thinking about why that is, right? What is it that makes our friendship so good? What is it that makes us so close? And the answer came to me in the form of a picture that one of them sent me. It was a picture from the wedding. It was right before the Eucharistic prayer. I was incensing the altar. And so they were sitting right around here, not in this church, but another one right in front of the altar, facing the altar. And I was standing between them and the altar, also facing the altar. And so all of us, together, were facing Jesus. Right? That's what makes that friendship so real. That's what makes that friendship so deep. That we're standing side by side, facing the most wonderful, deepest, most powerful common interest there is. Right? God. And so we have that deep friendship. And then to take this to another level, as I was washing dishes in the house yesterday morning, two days ago, who's ever cried doing dishes? I started crying doing the dishes, and I'm not traditionally a crier. The first movie I cried in was because my brother punched me and I dropped my candy bar, right? I was washing dishes and I started crying because I was thinking about this idea with Jesus. Right? Jesus calls us his friends. And so in this feast that we celebrate, Jesus comes to us to become our friends, to stand side by side with us, to look with us and to guide us to the Father. This is what heaven is going to be. Right? Us gazing upon the face of God. That's amazing. And so we enter into that friendship with God by standing side by side with Jesus, making our way to our heavenly homeland, by right? gazing upon the face of the Father and trying to do His will. Now, the third point, or the third uh, thing I want to speak of on friendship is perhaps the most important, practically speaking. Right? Gazing upon the face of God, super important. We need to do it. But practically speaking, I think that this one is the most important, and it is that friends endure hardships together. And I say that it's the most important, practically speaking, because I think that if we follow, to follow this, we have to have the right idea about who Jesus is, about who the Messiah is. Right? The Jews were looking for a different kind of Savior. Right, the Jews were looking for this political figure that would come and overthrow the Romans who had oppressed them for a while, who would free them from all of their worldly stress, from all of their worldly suffering, from all of their worldly uh, entrapments. Jesus was not that person. Right? The Jews were still overseen by the Romans after Jesus came. And so it's important for us to realize who Jesus is, right? Because the same is true for us. A lot of the Jews didn't believe because Jesus wasn't who they thought he was supposed to be. And we can do the same thing if our faith is weak, right? When hardships come our way, whenever suffering enters into our life, we can be tempted to say, well, Jesus must not exist or maybe he just doesn't care about me, because if he did, obviously, he would not want me to go through this suffering that I'm going through. If he was real, he'd obviously take it away. And so he either must not exist, or he simply doesn't care about me. But that's not the case. 
Right? Jesus came to enter into suffering with us. Right? To stand with us in the midst of our difficulties. I recently read uh, the book the, uh, Beyond the Band of Brothers. Maybe you've heard of uh, the series, the movie series, The Band of Brothers. And in both the book and the miniseries, they focus on this group of men who were called the Tekoa men. Right, so this is a group of uh, World War II uh, veterans who they follow their fighting. And the Tekoa men was a special group of men. Tekoa was the place where they trained in Georgia, and it was an awful experience. Their uh, commander was just a very mean guy. He was very hard on them. He made them do these ridiculous marches where they go hundreds of miles. I mean, it was just incredible. But, even though it was a terrible thing, they formed this bond because of what they suffered together. And so when new people came in, they would sort of look down on them and say, well, you didn't go through what we went through at Tekoa. Right? They formed this bond and they knew that the person next to them, because they had gone through that together, that they would do anything for them. They knew that they were there with them in those difficult times and that they would help them as best they could. Right? And the same is true with our friendship with God. Right? That Jesus was sent not to throw off all of our suffering, but to enter into it. And he entered into it in the most incredible way on the cross. Jesus suffered every suffering that we could imagine. And so we know that he is there with us when we're suffering. That he's a true friend because he's willing to endure those hardships with us. He's willing to enter into our suffering and try to help us through it. And so we come here today to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We come here to celebrate the fact that God revealed himself to us fully in the person of Jesus. And we come here to celebrate the amazing reality that God wants to enter into a friendship with us. And so we pray that we would respond with that yes of Mary that we've been pondering over these last few weeks. Let us open ourselves up to his generous offer to be our friends. Let us remain side by side with him, walking through life, gazing upon the Father. And let us call upon Jesus to be with us in our sufferings. And if we do this, if we do these things, then we will be the true friends of Jesus. And we will come to enjoy the great friendship that he initiates with us here today.